I haven't been this excited to rummage in the guts of a bit of tech for a long time, because this couple generation old knock has some pretty wild hardware in a tiny form factor, so I can't wait to tear it apart and game on it. Uh, but first, today's video is sponsored by Linode, or by its new underground street fighting name, Akamai. Linode slash Akamai is your one-stop shop for Linux-based cloud computing services and Krav Maga technique-related queries. Just look at this long list of Linux-based cloud computing services they offer. Mmm, I can tell you're impressed. And this, combined with their competitive pricing and award-winning customer support, makes Linode a no-brainer choice. Sign up using the link in the video description to get a 60-day, $100 free credit. I would take gold PCB trace gamer skull over hexagons any day of the week. Having said that, it's also covered in gamergons, so this thing's like the gamer singularity, I guess. The box that this thing comes in reminds me a little bit of the kind of crate people would have been clinging to for buoyancy when the Titanic went down. It's got like a little tassel that you pull out, and then it's got the thingies in it, look at that! Said thingies include a bit of power cable, An upright desk stand for the NUC with a VESA mount, that's very useful, so you can kind of attach it to the back of your monitor. And then this is some plexiglass or acrylic or something. I'm assuming you can like laser etch some custom gamer logo into this to put it somewhere. and an absurdly massive power brick. It is 230 watts, but that's not an excuse, especially when compared to a Razer unit of similar wattage. And the Razer power brick is even from an older laptop. Ooh, it looks quite a lot like an AliExpress mini PC, I'm not gonna lie. One of the things that gets me real excited about this official AliExpress mini PC is the I.O. It has I.O. in spades. This is just the front. Around the back, we've got even more. Look at all of it. It's even got a full-sized Ethernet port on it, which is real impressive for a non-cloud gaming device. And again, it is covered in gamer guns, so you know the performance is gonna be serious. But something that actually alludes to performance is all the ventilation. You get these tiny peaks of a pretty beefy cooling solution. And according to the sticker, this mini PC has some RTX in it, which means I think it's time to open it up. I am so excited to see the inside of the Intel version of an AliExpress mini PC. Ooh, I like that. It comes with the correct size of Allen key for you to open it up with. That's very exciting. It's the last screw and then, oh, that just lifts off. Ooh, very cool. We've got a bit of skull on the inside of it. And I actually think that's what the bit of acrylic that you get with it is for. You can change this out to a different pattern. Then it'll probably light up showing through this semi-translucent bit in the top. And then this is the ribbon cable over here that I'm guessing connects the, the lighting under that. You definitely won't see those details on an AliExpress mini PC. Now, I guess the first step is to start with number one. That makes sense. Yes, there we go. That can kind of pop out like that. And then under that, we're going to have to unplug the lighting cable. Put that aside. Ooh, we've got some things that aren't soldered down in here. This is our 500 gig Intel Optane drive that comes included. And there's another NVMe slot for more storage. And then this interesting connector down here, according to Intel's website, is an I.O. connector. Down here, we don't have a pathetic SD card slot. It's UHS-2, which is very fast. And as you probably noticed already, it's got dual channel RAM straight out of the box. Good job, Intel. 
Uh, so with that, let's see if we can dig deeper. I started this process by just undoing all the screws I could find, but when nothing budged after a bit of confused prying, I embarrassingly quickly resorted to a teardown tutorial which told me to remove all of the fan connectors and go through the very fun process of removing the microphone array. And next, I think I need to kind of just break the surround off. But despite being a professional plastic surround breaker, the process was a lot more difficult than the video led on. Yeah. Yo, the guy in the video makes it seem so easy, what? But with legendary persistence and skill, it eventually budged. Ooh, okay. So we've got the surround bit off. We're left with this kind of shell metal basket thing, uh, which kind of holds the motherboard in place, which is the next part that we can kind of lift out now. And after undoing a standoff, it popped right out into my hands. Oh, ah, uh, oof. Hey, it's loose. So that is the, the motherboard, which we'll have a look at in a second. But first, I want to show you the pretty substantial fan array. These are some big ass blowers. Uh, they're made by everybody's favorite fan company, Delta. So they can probably go 7 trillion RPM, which is pretty cool. That fin stack would give the average gaming laptop a pretty serious inferiority complex. And again, the insides of this Intel system makes it seem like the hot older brother of the AliExpress system I looked at ages ago. It's got, I think, five heat pipes? Because I think this heat pipe that cools some of the memory and power delivery for the RTX 2060 that's under here, it, it, it's, this is the same heat pipe. Uh, and then we have our i7 laptop chip in here. These internals are really cool. Let me quickly close it up and then we can try some gaming on it. I mean, I, I feel like the the glowing red eyes is a, is, is a nice touch. Imagine somebody that doesn't know anything about computers turns this on and they're like, wait a minute, have I been hacked? <laughs> is this what is this what being hacked looks like? Now, when it comes to bloatware with Windows 11, I, it, it confuses me a little bit. I don't know what of this stuff is just Windows 11 bloatware and what of this stuff is Intel knock bloatware. Uh, but this system comes with TikTok on it, which I don't know how I feel about that. It also has this weird thing called ESPN on it, which I'm not, I'm not sure I know what that is. And while digging around in out of focus land, I noticed something worrying. The i7 in here is just a quad core. I was expecting it to be similar to something like the 11800H, which is an eight core CPU, but they're completely different SKUs. So hopefully that quad core can keep up with the RTX 2060. Let's find out. As tradition dictates, we're starting off with GTA 5. This is with all on high settings at 1080p. Ooh, I may have manifest a problem here with my worry because that RTX 2060 is not doing a whole lot with GTA 5. GTA 5 has weird utilization, but still, that's not a great thing to see. And the thing is, it's not like we have a heavily kneecapped RAM configuration in here. We have 16 gigs of dual channel RAM, and it's even running at its rated 3200 megahertz speed out of the box. So yeah, we can't like upgrade that to fix this problem. Let's try a more demanding game and see what that does. With Battlefield 5, the problem is not quite as bad. Uh, we're still getting a little bit of a CPU bottleneck, but occasionally we get up to about 90% GPU utilization. So there may be a bottleneck, but it's not like the graphics gods being maced in the face. Uh, with that, let me play for about half an hour so we can see what the temperatures and noise are like. Yeah, I don't know, the temperatures are very impressive for a little thing like this, and they're nothing like the standard gaming laptop cosplaying as the surface of Venus. It's not bad either, I'm sitting not particularly far from it. I was kind of expecting the SR71 at takeoff effect of a gaming laptop, but it, it, it's not doing that. So it, it's pretty cool. Although it is a shame to see that CPU bottleneck and the gaming experience is a little stuttery. But considering the total system power draw, even two odd years after its launch, this is still quite a lot of performance per watt. This system's performance kind of reminds me of a very specific tier of low-end Celeron 
where the iGPU and the CPU are very evenly matched in their struggles, this is obviously a significantly less terrible example of that because, you know, we're getting about 66 frames per second at 1080p medium settings with Cyberpunk. Like, the system is fast. One of the issues here, though, is that if we wanted to uh, turn something like DLSS on to get us a bit more performance, it's not really going to help much, as you see here, because well, the GPU power isn't the problem, right? So we're not going to be getting a lot more frame rate that way. On that note, let's see what BIOS options we have available on this little skull candy. Ooh, it's got a fancy BIOS on it. I was kind of expecting something that looked very DOS-esque. Although the fanciness was relatively superficial. There was some useful stuff in there, but no direct overclocking settings, although it did arouse my excitement with a real-time performance tuning setting for some desktop overclocking, maybe? But XTU just isn't compatible with the Intel CPU in here. I could trick the software to install by bypassing compatibility checks, but then it would just refuse to launch. The closest thing to overclocking I could do to try and alleviate the CPU bottleneck was get the CPU to not clock above 400 megahertz, which broke everything. So for whatever that's worth, thank you for watching this video about a massive power brick that came with a PC in the box, and uh, until the next video, bye bye <laughs>